All right, welcome back. We're still on this calculator program. We're going to move to version 2. So this assumes you've already got version 1 working. For version 2, we're going to prompt the user uh, to enter the numbers and enter the operation they would, they would like to perform. So let's jump right into it. So again, make sure you already have version 1 completed and running. Uh, that was covered in the previous videos. And the thing about version 1 was we hard-coded the numbers. So in this case, we had 10 and 3. And of course, every time we ran it, it did uh, use the, the 10 and 3 values. If we wanted to change it, right, we'd come here and edit. Maybe we want 20 and 3, and we'd run it and see the results. So instead of hard-coding it for version 2, we want to make it where we can enter the inputs. So first... Since we're incrementing our version number, let's make this version 2. All right, that takes care of uh, currently as saying version 1, but now we'll have version 2. And the other thing we want to make a change is instead of hard coding the numbers here, in fact, maybe I'll just comment so we can remember this was version 1. All right, so version 1, we did that. But for version 2, we're going to prompt. So, and here where I say get the operation, we're actually going to get the numbers and, and, uh, and get, the, um, get the operation. So what I'll do is say, in addition to having these numbers, um, I'm going to say also get the operation. Now when you think about the operation, it's going to either be a plus, uh, right, for a, for a to add to sum or, or a minus or a, a star if you're multiplying or a slash if you're dividing. So when we think about that, that's a single character. And I'll just call it op for operation. So really what we want to get are three things. We want to get the number, the first number. We want to get the operation and the second number. So let's do that. Let's say we're going to get the inputs. And you could almost say, since we're talking about functions, we might want to have a function that says uh, get the inputs. And so uh, we could do it either way. We could do it right here, direct, or I'm going to do it in the function. So I want to show you both ways. Here, let's just get the, we'll say get the inputs. All right, so first I'll say printf, um, enter number one. So enter number one, if I can type here. So enter number one, and we'll print that out, and then we'll do our scan F, so scan formatted, looking for percent %D. All right, that's what we're looking for. And of course, we know we need to tell it where to put it. We want to put it in number one, but remember, and, and the warning's telling you, that we, you want to give a pointer to where that's at. So use the pointer operator. Of course, as soon as we do that, that error goes away. Now let's do another printf. We'll say enter the operation. And I'll put in parentheses a plus, a minus, a, uh, so it can be plus, it can be minus, it can be a star, it can be a slash, it can be the percent. And then we'll do a scan F, a percent C, percent C for character. So a single character, and same thing, we want to give a pointer to where that's at. And then let's do a print F, enter the, or I'll say enter number two, enter number two. And again, we'll do the scan F percent D, because we're looking for a decimal value, the address operator of number 2. Now at that point, we should have the values that we want. And actually, for test purposes, you could do this. Uh, we could say printf, OK, percent D, percent C, percent D, backslash N. And we could say, OK, let's show number 1. Let's show the operation, 
and let's show number two. Now that'd be kind of a good way to verify. Now remember, you should be following along, typing this in, running it just like I'm doing. That's the only way you're going to learn is actually type it in just like I'm doing here. So where it says enter a number, let's say I enter 10. Enter the operation. Well, I'll say maybe a plus, press enter. And then it says uh, I got the OK, I got the 10. Um, actually, well, let's see what happened. Oh, see, this is this is the great thing about running these uh, live and, and seeing seeing what happened. Uh, I want you to notice right here, we actually had a warning. In fact, I'm even seeing it here. Invalid conversion. Anytime it sees a percent, it believes, in other words, anytime you're using a percent inside a print formatted, it believes your the very next character is a formatting character. Just like here, right, the, the percent D, it says, well, your next one's going to be a format of a decimal. A percent C is going to be a format of a character. If you really want to use the percent character, then do a percent percent, right? Do the percent percent. And so now when we click on run, notice, okay, enter the number. I'll say 10, and I'll press enter. Enter the operation. I'm going to say, um, we'll do the plus, press enter. And we're still getting the error. And I want you to notice where it says OK right here, where it says OK. And in other words, we were printing out OK, and we're seeing the 10 print out OK. But where we have this character, we're seeing it, it comes down here. And then we have this very strange number. Now, the reason I get super excited when, when things like this happen on the video, this captures the types of subtle errors you'll have, and it can be very confusing. And here, by doing it, basically capturing it from the, the video, uh, you get to, to see some debug efforts. So one of the reasons I wanted to print this out was to see, right, I wanted to see 10 plus uh, 3, and, of course, we know it doesn't even ask me to enter the, the, uh, that character I was expecting. In fact, we're getting the new line character. Here's why that's happening. When it did the scan F, percent D, for that first number, indeed, it picked this up. But remember, when we picked that up, we then pressed the Enter key, and so by pressing the enter key, when it did this next scan for a character, it actually got the return or enter key. So it actually picked that up. And so since it picked that up, then when it came and said scan for this next number, notice here we had we entered where it says enter the number, we actually have the plus. Alright. So I realize that's probably a little confusing of what, what's going on here. So um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say, and I'm going to say eat, <laughs> kind of a funny comment, eat the trailing new line. And what I'm going to do by that, I'm just going to say get char. We know that when you, you type in a number here, and you press enter, there's a new line character. But here we're going to eat it. That is, we're going to basically say, we don't, we're going to go ahead and read that. Then it will say, enter the operation. And of course, we will read the operation, but the operation is also going to be followed by a new line character. So I'm going to say, eat the trailing new line. Again, there's an easier way to do this. We'll learn later on, but for right now, this is actually a pretty good learning process. So we're going to eat that new line, and then we can enter number two. Let's give it a try. Okay, number one, 10. Press Enter. Enter the operation. Let's do a plus. Press Enter. Ah, enter number two. How about a three? And notice at that point, we've got our results, same as they were the previous one. And we took care of this getting rid of the trailing new line character. Let's run this again. In fact, let me run it. I'll do 
run it from here, main. Okay, enter the number. How about we enter a 20? Uh, enter the operation. This time we want to do multiply. Of course, we're not really, the operation we really don't care about. We're just doing the same thing every time. But, but we're definitely reading this in. Okay. Now, before we finish this video, let's take care of actually performing only the operation asked for. So here's how we're going to do that. We'll come in here. And when we, uh, only if the operation, when you think about it, we have this character, OP, only if it's equal to the desired operation will we do it. So watch this. And again, there's, there's other ways to do this. There's easier ways, but this will, this will satisfy what we need. We'll say, um, and th also this is not the most efficient, but again, it works for what we need right now. If the, and, and this is a single quote, a single quote, okay? Make sure you have a single quote. A single quote represents a character. If OP is exactly equal to that, okay, so if this operation, the double equal says exactly equal. So if it's equal to that, then print this out. But if it's not equal to that, it skips this. Let's do the same thing here. If we have a single quote, a minus, exactly equal to OP. And remember I said later in the course we'll, you'll find a more efficient way to do that, this, but for now it's fine. Same thing here. If single character, this time the star, if single quote exactly equal to, notice the double equals, that's a error a lot of people make, this is double equals, then do this, let's do two more, if single quote, this time a divide, exactly equal to the operation, and the last, if the percent, exactly equal to op. Now, I want to, well, first let's go ahead and run this. Okay, we'll say 10. We want to do a multiply. Uh, how about a 3? 10 times 3, 30. All done. So we've got that um, like we want. Let's do another one. Let's say period slash main. How about 20 divide 10. So here we've got 20 divided by 10, and we've got 2 all done. Uh, the number one error I see people make when they're first learning this is they leave out one of the equals. Notice right now it, it's telling you you've got an error. And, if, of course, if you run it, you'll also see that you got an error, and it points exactly where it's at. So make sure you say the double equals and run that. And we've got us our calculator where it prompts you, right? Enter the values, and uh, let's do the remainder this time. Cool. So thanks for making it this far. Again, it's super important. You have your code running just like I show it here. You can pause the video. You can rewatch sections. And there's more to come. Version 3 is going to be in the next video. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks, as always, for watching.